Malachi 1 and 6. We read Malachi 1 and 6. You can write it down. Elohim says, let me say something to you. This is what Elohim says. If I am your father, where is my honor? That's the commandment, is it not? And if I am your master, if I am your master, your Lord, Sarah acknowledged Abraham as being Lord. Where is my fear? Where is my fear? Where is my fear? Daniel Sill said reverence, reverential fear. And we're going to prove this here in a second. If you are a man and a righteous man, you got a burden on your shoulder. It's hard being a man. Eve said it's hard being a woman. I'm explaining that to you. It's hard being the man because we are built to create. We are built to work. That's how we were designed. And when we are not building and creating accomplishment, accomplishing things, then we feel weak. We feel worthless. There have been plenty of, uh, let me tell you something about my great grandfather who committed suicide. Um, my great grandfather um, procured a loan from his wife's parents. This is some 18, I don't know, 1860 something, 1870 something maybe. And he was able to buy quite a bit of land. And he amassed a lot of land. <sighs> Yafeth says, you got too much land. So Yafeth says, uh, and for visitors that would be Caucasian people. Uh, Yafeth says, we are not going to. Um, lend you fertilizer on credit. And he says, I've always paid you. Every year, I have a bountiful harvest, I paid you your money. He says, ah, oh, well, you know, it, was a, it, was, it was a design plan. And so let me tell you, um, long story short, he ended up losing his land. He had to sell his land, to pay the debt. This man felt worthless because he had lost what he had worked so hard to achieve. And he cut his own throat and uh, his wife brought in a doctor. They stitched him up and he took the stitches out later and died. Um, with being a man, it's hard if we are operating, if we are operating within the will of Elohim. I've had sisters say to me, Aria, I just hate being a woman. And I ask why? She says, because, you know, I feel so needy. I feel so needy. Mm. Ask, do you know why you feel that way? Because I'm a woman. But where does it come from? The way we feel about things, it comes from some place. Where? Genesis 3.16, she says, oh, good mother of Mary Jesus. Mm. Oh, my goodness. And we spent time on this. Explaining, she says, now I understand. Men slipping in depression because they lost their job. They lost their identity and their work, their validation. Can't pay their bills. So now they slip in depression. I get a phone call. Aria, can you come over here and talk to this brother and so forth and so on? Can you tell him it's going to be OK? And so on, so on, so on, right. It's OK when he gets a job. It's OK when he gets a check. It's OK when he feels like like he is leading, not just contributing, but when he's leading. Brothers and sisters, this is how Elohim created us and we have to respect it on both sides. So, again, Elohim says, if I am your father, where is my honor? If I am your master, then where is my reverence? Where is my fear? Eve's divine duty. Eve's divine duty. We wanted to present before everyone how it is 
Eve's job, her role, her responsibility, her duty to serve her husband, to serve her husband. If you are with a man, it is to serve him in like or in similar capacity. Um, Ephesians 5, 22, women are reminded to submit themselves to their husbands as you would unto the master unto um, Yeshua. First Corinthians fourteen thirty four through thirty five. Submit a woman is to submit herself to her husband according to the precept of the law. Um, Ted asked, "Where is that in the law? Can anybody help me understand where where that is in the law?" Really. In First Corinthians, y'all something else. First Corinthians, turn to First Corinthians fourteen thirty four, please. You 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 fast. You know where it is in the law. Okay, no, that's not law. Yeah, that's epistle. the uh, The question is when Paul says First Corinthians fourteen thirty four, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. So the question is, where is that in the law? <clears throat> okay, so we have Danielle says it's in Genesis. Where in Genesis? Oh, Ephraim says Genesis 3.16. So turn your attention to Genesis 3.16. And would you read Genesis 3.16 for me, Brother Yaziel, please? <clears throat> Excuse me. To the woman, then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth, and you will desire. Oh, you don't want that one. That's the wrong version. It says, and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. Yeah, it's not the right translation. This yeah. one. To the woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to your children. Your desire will be for your husband. Your desire will be for your husband. And this is where a lot of the challenges are coming in now, brothers and sisters. That woman's sense of longing. And remember, we're spending a lot of time talking about a man working a man working and it doesn't matter what that work is um i write um i'm writing a lot of stuff that's work i prepare classes that's work i teach children that's work yeah i, I do a lot of work i do a lot of job i counsel i teach i do everything right that's work and uh, i enjoy doing it uh and i will tell you you know i mean hey i don't have a problem with putting you know some of my business out there straight i'll be honest with you you know but, you know, like even the house said to me, you know, you don't even live here at the house. You just sleep here. You always at that tabernacle working. Yes. And that's where I'm going to be because I enjoy working. Um, it is who I am. It is who we are. And when man cease to work, things are going to fall to pieces. Yeshua said, right, I work and my father work. I work. So we are built that way. And so. We want women to understand that when you marry a man, you can expect that. Now, there's some other things that you can expect as well, because when he comes home, he's tired. And this is when you want to talk. Right. And this is also going to present some problems because he wants to watch ESPN and uh, fellowship with Bud Light. He's not trying to talk at this juncture. OK, so you got to you got to. Pick your, your time. You got to pick your, your season. And again, it's challenging. I understand that it's challenging for men because we have to be sympathetic and empathetic to the fact that she wants to talk. Right. And so guess what? You got to make that happen. And if you can't make that happen, you got to communicate. Say, you know what? Right now is not a good time for me. Remember, we talked about pleasant words. Right, Antoine? Pleasant words, right? I'm trying to school you, Antoine. Okay, I'm trying to school you because 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 you young blood. Are you hooked up yet? No. Okay. All right. So you, oh, you you looking? Okay. 
<laughs> I understand where this is going to help you, right? So you got to use, you have to use pleasant words. Just say, you know, look here, baby. Um, not right now. I'm going through a little bit of mental tribulation, going through a little bit of emotional tri tribulation. Um, it, like, just, just let the just let the dust settle. OK, and I'll talk to you. And she'll say, OK, right. And here's a door to virtue. Is there anything I can do to help you with your tribulation? Um, no, no, no. Just, I, you know, I'll deal with you. You got to have that communication. Now, she ain't away too long. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay, it's tribulation over. Okay, no, I'm gonna tell you that right now, because she is built to let you know what is on her mind. This is both right, defensive and offensive. This is a defensive element within her nature and an offensive attribute within her nature. She has to let it out. Go ahead and somebody read. Yeah. <clears throat> to the woman he said I will make your pains in childbearing very severe that's law I mean you know I look at a lot of animals animals just give birth to their little young and then they go out and jump over some fence and eat some grass <laughs> right women in contractions and labor and screaming and, and, and tearing the table up and all this other type of stuff by law by law this is by law go ahead i will make your pains in childbearing very severe mm -hmm. with painful labor mm -hmm. you will give birth to mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. your desire will be for your husband your desire will be for your husband your desire will be for the husband we understand we understand but we call it what nagging we understand. We call it nagging, but we understand. Go ahead. Your desire will be for your husband, uh -huh. and he will rule over you. That's law. Rule. 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 That's law. So, he is going to bear rule over you. I don't think I have this in this particular um, segment, but uh, one of the uh, commentaries that I have uh, from a marriage uh, therapist, she was saying that, one of the things that women hate is uh, to be controlled. She does not like a controlling husband, a controlling. That's the law. It's written in the law. It's written in the law. He will bear rule over you. He will control things. You're just so controlling. Talk to Elohim about that, boo. Talk to Elohim about that. Are we good, Ted? We good? Let's turn our attention to 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 1 Corinthians 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and uh, let's pick it up at verse 9 through 20. I want to set the, I want to set the premise here for what we're about to get into, okay? There are duties and responsibilities, duties and responsibilities, and it is a sensitive one, and this right here is for grown folk. Um, 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 attention okay um, but we want to set the premise because it's important to learn about what's taking place verse 9 know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom people who are unrighteous are people who transgress the covenant they transgress the law that is everything that is found in the Torah Genesis Exodus Leviticus Numbers Deuteronomy right Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Ted asked a question. Where is it written in the law that a woman is subject to her husband according to the law? That's Genesis 3.16. Elohim said that. Whatever is written in Genesis, whether Elohim stated it or even Adam stated it. Remember what Adam said. Now shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave cleave unto his wife and they too shall become one flesh. Elohim didn't say that. Adam said that. Yeshua quotes it in the book of Matthew as what? Law. As law. Okay? These are the things that we are bound by, brothers and sisters. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Be not deceived, neither those who are sexually perverse, 
nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, these are homosexuals, sodomites, abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Elohim. And such were some of you. In other words, you used to be one of these individuals, if not all of them. And such were some of you, but you are washed. But you are sanctified. But you are justified in the name of the Master Yeshua. Uh, and by the spirit of our Elohim. Now, in verse 12, it becomes very interesting. He says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of anything. In other words, there is nothing existential or eternal that is going to subjugate me. Nothing. Okay. Chapter 7, verse 1, please. Now, regarding the questions you asked in your letter, yes, it is good to abstain from sexual relations. It's, 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 it's good. It's good. It's good for some. Not everybody has that gift to abstain. Understand something. There is a commandment. There is a law. And it says be fruitful and multiply. So Elohim has designed us that way, brothers and sisters. Designed us that way. And we're going to talk about this. But Yeshua says... You know, there are some people who have committed themselves to the kingdom. Therefore, they are celibate. There are some people who are born this way. There are some people who have been made this way. Not everybody can receive this same. Paul even talks about this. Paul says not everybody has this gift to abstain. So it's how we use this gift is what Paul is talking about. Verse two. Because there is so much sexual immorality, mm -hmm. each man should have his own wife and each woman should have her own husband. Mm -hmm. The husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs mm -hmm. and the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. Mm -hmm. The wife gives authority over her body to her husband. Give it to me. Go ahead. And the husband gives authority over to his body to his wife. And likewise, I got to have it, boo. Do That's not my body. <laughs> That's my body. Every inch. Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, strike that from the record place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Do not deprive each other of sexual relations unless you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time so you can give yourselves more completely to prayer. Mm -hmm. Afterward, you should come together again so that Hillel won't be able to tempt you mm -hmm. because of your lack of self-control. Because of your lack of self-control. Go ahead. I say this as a concession, not as a command. I say this by a concession, not by commandment. Paul says I have to address something that is... That is challenging something that's taking place. So let's go back. Let's understand this. Okay. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Do benevolence. Let the husband render unto the wife. Right. Affection. Affection. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. Listen to me. Sexual intercourse is is um, is a necessity. This is the reason why I prefaced everything here in first Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. A lot of times, again, men and women, they use this for power. They use it for leverage. Not a good thing. Not a good thing because you're playing with something that is spiritual. You're playing with something that is spiritual, you know. I'm going to shut you off. I'll say, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't, matter of fact, don't even threaten to do that. Okay. Does everybody follow me? Um, this is not something, and, and, and you have to be mindful of these things, brothers and sisters, because we have sisters that complain that, you know, you know, my husband is not being very benevolent, you know. And so, OK. And so a lot of times we, we ask, OK, uh, brother, what's up with the benevolence? You know, and typically what happens is, Aria, I just I can't do anything. 
And I showed you all the pow drug last week, right? Sometimes that helps. Sometimes that won't even help because of the mouth, right? It does something to a man. Men are not built to take that type of lamentation. Um, we are not built. It drives us to, it drives us to what we read last week. Uh, what you yeah, drive you crazy, but what did the uh, man do? Did the man say that he'd rather be in jail than to be at home? The, the Bob was no, I was reading the newspaper, the Huffington Post, right? Yeah, 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 the, the Huffington Post. And again, this is something that, um, this is something that women have to be very, very, very mindful. You have to be careful of. And I understand. And this class is helping us to better appreciate your design. Okay. Turn your attention over to, uh, I just thought of something. Go to the book of Judges. I want you to look at something because this is classic. Turn your attention over to Judges 14. This is just an example. Judges 14. And Yazi, I'll read 10. Through 17, please. And, and this is what men essentially go through. A lot of times, a lot of times in a number of different things and a number. And it's essentially how women are designed. Go ahead. As his father was making final arrangements. I don't think your mic is on. Okay, go ahead. As his father was making final arrangements for the marriage, Samson threw a party at Timnah, as was a custom for elite young men. When the bride's parents saw him, they selected 30 young men from the town to be his companions. Samson said to them, let me tell you a riddle. If you solve my riddle during these seven days of the celebration, I will give you 30 fine linen robes and 30 sets of festive clothing. But if you can't solve it, then you must give me 35 linen robes and the 30 sets of festive clothing. All right, they agreed. Let's hear your riddle. So he said, out of the one who eats came something to eat. Mm -hmm. Out of the strong came something sweet. Three days later, they were still trying to figure it out. On the fourth day, they said to Samson's wife, entice your husband to explain the riddle for us, or we will burn down your father's house with you in it. Did you invite us to this party just to make us poor? So Samson's wife came to him in tears and said, you don't love me. You hate me. See, okay. See, now remember, we've been talking about this for past couple of weeks. Because you don't provide me with what I feel that I need. Here's a different circumstance, but it's the same principle that governs the behavior. Um, oh boy, you're in a lot of trouble. Because I'm going to be coming after you, right, every single second, every single minute, every single hour. I'm going to beat you into submission through my emotions. Let's see what happens. So Samson's wife came to him in tears and said, you don't love me. You hate me. Mm. You have given my people a riddle, but you haven't told me the answer. Mm -hmm. I haven't even given the answer to my father or mother, he replied. Why should I tell you? Mm -hmm. So she cried whenever she was with him. See, a brother can't take that. Stacy, the only one said, yeah, yeah, that's right. See, there are all the other brothers like, you know, mm, I'm keep my mouth shut. This is true, sisters. And what I'm saying is that it would... It would behoove you to be sensitive about the lamentations. If a man says something, take it, take it. Um, if he is the head, if he has authority, if you have put before him a request and this is how he has responded and he ends that discussion with that particular statement, move on. Women have a propensity to carry it on until she is satisfied emotionally somebody or something is going to break. Go ahead and continue to read. I haven't even given the answer to my father or mother. He replied, he replied, why should I tell you? So she cried whenever she was with him mm -hmm. and kept it up for the rest of the celebration. See, and go ahead. At last on the seventh day, seventh he, day. Good he, Lord. 
He told her the answer because she was tormenting him with her nagging. You see, tormenting. Brothers, do you understand that this is how women and sisters? Let me ask you a question. Is this true? Is this right? Would you all agree with this? Talk to a brother. Are y'all talking? I mean, you can talk to me. Hold on. Sister Ephrata. <laughs> what do you think? Do, do, does this make sense? Does this, um, does this look like the character of a female when she is uh, desiring something from her from her husband or partner and she may not be gaining it so she is going to lament and mourn um, in what we would interpret as a nagging way from what I I have observed okay because she says she ain't never done it okay go ahead I don't do that <laughs> okay um, that that is true that's true okay now give the mic to my man okay <laughs> Can you confirm or do you do you do you, do you, do you affirm that statement? Yes, I do. And uh, OK. All right. From what she has observed, she says that that is true. She said, because I don't nag him. If he says this the way it is, I say, OK, honey, you know, hey, you know, I'm in your hands, baby. And that's what we talking about. All right. Go ahead. Uh, then she explained the riddle to the young men. Okay. 18. All right. Yeah. Well, OK, well. I just wanted to go over that piece right here. That is very, very important. Okay. All right. Does everybody follow me? Do you, do you, do you, do you understand? Have I lost anyone? Okay. I want to go back to first Corinthians chapter seven. First Corinthians chapter seven. Again, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Um, Honey, I'd like for us to be intimate this evening. Um, nah, I got a headache. I, I, I ain't about to ain't got a headache. Okay. 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 All right. About two hours, baby, and we should be good to go. Okay. Uh, you know, it's been a long day at work, and, and I, I, I'm sorry, but I can't do anything. See, we ain't gonna play no games because there's a need. There's a need. Y'all understand? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, baby, sometimes I may need a little special attention, and you know, just a little special. Ah, uh, nah. I went to the dentist, doctor. So I can't do that. I, I can't do that. See, I, I got a shock. I got a hot key right there. He said, I can't do it. Hold on, baby. Open up. There you go. Yeah, we're going to take care of that, baby. We're going to take care of that right there. Oh, why? Right. Yeah. What I'm saying, brothers and sisters, is one of the reasons that we have challenges is because people play games, attitude games. And these things are spiritually, uh, spiritually induced within all of us. They're there for a reason, for a reason. Man does not have control of his own body, belongs to the partner. The partner does not have control of her own body, belongs to the man. We come together. How can I love you? How can I please you? In an article published by reporter Richard Sign, Sign quotes Dr. Edward O. Lawman, Ph.D., who is a professor of sociology at the University of Chicago and lead, a th and lead author of a major survey of sexual practices, the social organization of sexuality, sexual practices in the United States. Sane writes, the majority of adult men under 60 think about sex at least once a day, reports Lawman. Only about one quarter of women say they think about it that frequently. 
As men and women age, each fantasize less, but men still fantasize about it twice as often. Men desire sex and a lot of it for various reasons. Listen to me for various reasons. Men's stimuli are slightly different than females, which becomes the catalyst for our sexual endeavors. Men's sexual desire can be stimulated by environment and context as men tend to consciously and subconsciously think upon the act and performing it whenever and, and wherever he can. The woman often seeks the context of love where the man seeks the context of sex. Dobson writes, men are visually oriented, caring less about the romantic component or personal identity. Men can easily separate love and sex, where this appears to be at times more of a challenge for the female. McLean states, women expect a prince charming. Women expect a prince charming, while men just want a wife, sex, food, and a job, as well as respect and appreciation. Visual stimuli. Remember, we talked last week about women desiring sexual intimacy in the context of agape love. Agape eros love. Hold on, let me make up a word. Erape? Erape? Hmm. Agape Ross? Ag Ross. Right. It's the combination where when man and, 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 and woman uh, gets to together, there is the desire from the woman to be intimate and there is a work up to that moment of passion. 